How's it going everyone? I'm on one of my favorite websites which is rawpixel.com and this is just a website that's got tons of images and a lot of them are free. So typically what I'll do is I'll type in a search term, maybe I type in cat or something, right? And then it comes back with a whole bunch of images and over on the right hand side I can select public domain and then I can work through those images as well. Well I found collection of images and I'm not going to butcher the name here but you can see here the name Gakan is the last name and this is free creative commons Japanese woodblock prints and illustrations so what I want to do is spend a couple minutes and just walk through the hundred or so photos or illustrations here and then I want to walk through in kind of real time how I would use these images because I get requests from people that say, well, this is great that you've got these public domain images, but what could I do with it to one, create artwork that I think could actually sell, and two, how do I modify the image so that I'm not going to get a copyright strike if I'm using a third-party website like a Redbubble or a TeePublic. So in this video, I'm going to take a quick look through some of these. I'm going to pick three or four images that I really like, and then I'm going to show you in real time what I would do to modify the image so that I could make it worthwhile to sell. Okay, so the first thing that I do when I'm on a website like this is I take a look at the different illustrations and I make a decision about what it is that I want to create, just big picture. So I can see here as I look through these images, I'll just scroll down to the bottom. On Raw Pixel, there's 105 results. I'll just open one at random, which is this fish one. Again, I'm just totally picking it at random. And this is a fish and it's digitally enhanced from a 1913 edition of this artist and it's a public domain image, meaning that I could use it as is. The reason I like these illustrations is that the backgrounds are relatively uniform, meaning I can remove them and then I can create artwork based on this. I may wanna keep the background, but probably not. So just from an artistic standpoint, I'm gonna lose this little image over here. I'm gonna keep the image, the main image of the fish, but I'll lose the background. That's probably what I'm going to do. And I'm kind of just looking at this in real time going, okay, these are all sort of similar backgrounds. So I'll remove them. And then is there any other photos or any other illustrations that really speak to me? If I'm going to pick say top three, I could pick three fish. I could pick three birds, that sort of thing. I personally really like Asian looking uh, buildings. Okay, so that's what I'm probably going to wind up doing here. So I've got two there and then maybe I'll pick a third one that is, oh, that cat's calling me. I'll probably do the cat picture here. Let me just do a quick scroll through. We've got, oh, okay, we've got three. One, two, three. I'm going to pick that one. Okay, so we've got the first one is Japanese architecture. I just logged in here now, so I'm just going to click the free download button. I've selected the original size, which is the largest, and now I'll just save this now to my file folder. Okay, and then I'll grab the other one as well. This is one here, beautiful image of a naturescape here, and I'll download this as well. I'll sign in and I'll download. Same thing here with this third one. This is a bridge, and I really like this one, so I'm gonna click the download button as well. Okay, so I've got my three images downloaded. Now I'm going to remove the background. Okay, so I'm just in Photoshop now and I'm just going to use a template here and I'm going to create a very large file for my design. So my design is pretty big. It's 10 inches wide by about 13 inches high and now I'm just going to import that picture. Okay, so I've put the image in now and as you can see there's a white frame around the image and there's a background that's pretty vintagey looking like vintage paper. What I want to do is just remove both of those. So I'm just going to go into my eraser tool and I'm going to erase it. And I like that better, although what I like to do is put a kind of a radical color underneath it. And the reason I do that is just to see if I've missed anything. So I'm just going to do this and just highlight anything that I might have missed. So see how this is not really what I wanted. It's taken away too much. 
So what I'm going to do here instead is I'll edit the image. Actually, I'll just I'll put the image back in. I'll just delete it and I'll just re-import it. Okay, so from here I'm going to in I'm going to remove this, but I'm going to put the tolerance down lower. I'm just going to make it 20 instead. And then I'll remove the white. And as you can see now, I'm starting to play with the image itself and I'm removing some of it. Now I'm just clean this up with the eraser tool. So what you could do here is you could leave this as is and you could you could put another layer underneath it that's similar in color. And then what'll happen is that will, you know, you would have to clean up, you know, inside here. You would clean up the inside of the image like that. And you could go around and you could clean it up more and more. But essentially what you'd be doing is making it look like it's part of a poster. So I could just move this down, make this a bit bigger, and I could make this vintage looking. Now because you know what the original image is, you may not like the way this looks. This might look amateurish or chalky, but if people don't know what the original image is, this might actually look good. People sometimes like this sort of modeled look on it. The other option is you could just pick the lighter color. So instead of the lower color, the, the darker color, I could just make it lighter. So now what I've done is I've effectively moved this into a higher, like a taller picture instead of a lower picture. So that's one option. Now what do I do up here? I could, now this, these are just options, okay? So I could have some sort of a sun. So for example, let's say I want to use a red sun, if it's Japanese, for example, and I could put that in behind my picture. So something like that. Now it's up to you if you wanted to remove the little grit, like it looks like sand grit. The other option is you could just have a lens flare or some sort of splatter, and you could actually put that in there as a different, uh, to add to that. So I'm like this sort of piece right here, you could actually copy that and paste it, and you could actually move it around and make more if you wanted to. That's one option. You could instead of, a, so by the way, this is now an original image. Like what I've done by removing the background, putting in my own background and putting in a circle, this is now mine. If somebody on Redbubble or TeePublic or Merch by Amazon were to come after me and say, hey, that original image is mine, it doesn't matter what the original image is. You've taken it and you've changed it. Now it's different if it's trademarked. If this is a picture of Robert Downey Jr. in an Iron Man costume, okay, that's a whole different story. But this is a public domain photo or a public domain illustration, and we are now working on different ways that we can make this look our own. So if this is a vintage print now, you could do that. You could also remove the background, and you could now put this on a t-shirt if you wanted as well. Now the reason that I'm able to create 30 or sometimes 40 designs in a day is now I'm just repeating whatever I stick in the front here off of the back. So if I want to have the layer be the background like that, I can now just import a new image. This image instead, remember this one with the tree? And now I can remove the white and I can remove the background here, and now I will just make this image what I wanted. I don't like that tree. I'm going to put that up at the top, and then I'm going to make this bigger. I'll move the sun. I happen to like that grid. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to try to clean that up. I think that makes it look nice, and I'm just going to move my image now to like there. I don't really like the Asian lettering. There's another design. So that literally took me 25 seconds. So this is my second one that I would do. Then I would import my third design. So here's the guy walking on a bridge with the umbrella. Same deal. I'll just remove the other one. I'm going to re remove the white. 
And, oh, I love that. So I know sometimes people go, oh, that doesn't look very good, but I really like the idea that it's textured. So now I'm just going to play with how this looks. And I'm going to make this look like that. And I may just clean up a little bit just around the edges on this. So I may just do like that, for example. Something like that. And then I may move the sun a tiny bit, maybe like that. I like having stuff off center, by the way. It's just a personal preference, but maybe something like that. And that's it, that's number three. Now again, I'm gonna remove the Asian lettering just because I'm not a fan of that. And again, I, now I've made it my own. So that's the third one that I've put down. And again, if I wanna make it a t-shirt, I would just remove the vintage background and now I'd save that as a PNG. So the last piece of this video is just gonna be these three images just on some products, just so you can see what this would look like in a finished, uh, finished product. So I hope you found that helpful. This is kind of a hybrid video because I'm walking through some public domain images that I found that I think are really cool and hopefully answering some questions where people are saying, but even if I find something that's really good, what do I do with it? So hopefully these design tips uh, helped a little bit. And uh, yeah, if you like what you saw, of course, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me a question. Uh, thank you so much for watching.